Hey guys, welcome back. Just want to make a quick video. There was a new critical thinking podcast that came out with Nagley in it. And I wanted to make a video about automation and different types of automation because I know he spoke about it and in some of the Discord channels I'm in, they discussed and we talked about how it's crazy how different people have different types of automation. So I thought for some people that are newer to the game and have interest in automation and kind of what it might be and what it looks like to other people, this is just going to be a quick video for the three types of automation that I've seen and that I've heard other bug hunters talk about for automation as it pertains to bug bounties. This isn't necessarily attack surface management for an enterprise level or anything like that unless you really scale it up super huge. Some people have tried to turn it into companies, but for now, this is going to be the main three types that you can go after if you're trying to create and deploy or develop automation for bug bounties. So the first one is what I would like to call bash scripts everywhere. So what that means is basically you're using all the open source tools, subfinder, amass, off whatever you want to use, XNL link finder, way more, whatever it is, you, you pick a, you know, one or a few tools for each task of subdomain enumeration and brute forcing and, you know, DNS resolution, whatever it may be, fuzzing, and you just use the open source tools and all you do is you write bash to chain them together. So you chain one, you put it in a text file and you chain that text file into another thing. So maybe you run subfinder and then from those subfinders you, you know, use HTTPX and resolve them and then you throw those through nuclei, right? Like that's, that can all be in one bash script and they can all have output in text files and they can all chain together and all that kind of stuff and that's great. This normally includes, like I said, a bunch of bash scripts scattered around either one VPS server or a bunch of VPS servers or maybe just from your laptop, whatever it may be. Maybe like the output is like something like text files and those are like putting folders, right? So you have like a folder for one target and then in that folder is there's like a subdomains folder and there's just a text file in there of subdomains. And then how you would go through those is something like grep and how you would get that to like go automatically would just be like setting some of the bash scripts on cron jobs on the actual server or on your machine, whatever it may be. The reason why I did this one first is because if anyone has watched the most recent episode of Critical Thinking before the time of this recording, I think it's like episode 15, Nagley's on it and this is what he uses and a lot of people know him to be a big automation guy. If you haven't seen it, check it out and then come back. And in that case, if you haven't watched any of the podcasts, go watch all of them because they're really good. But this is kind of the first thing and there's some pros and cons to this, obviously, just like everything, all three versions are going to have pros and cons. The pros to this is it's really fast development time. All you're doing is chaining together like basically what you would put in the command line, you just put in a bash script and then you put the next thing in the bash script, then you put the next thing and then you can run it and cron job it from there and you're done. And you at least have something out there and you can improve on it and change it over time. But you like in like literally a day can have a whole bunch of bash scripts and a whole bunch of stuff running that does automation for you. And it can be however you want it to be. The problem like that sometimes pops up is that scaling can get tedious. Now there's tools like Axiom and stuff like that, which is why it's definitely doable. And I'm pretty sure that's also what Nagley mentioned he uses. But in his interview, he mentioned that there was, you know, scaling trouble and he accidentally deleted a few things and stuff like that. So like scaling is a, is a process and that's where some of the time will get put in and perfecting stuff and where all the files need to be. And the other problem with people making monolithic bash scripts that run is that you're not creating a single point of failure. So if you want to run one mega bash script and you're going to put a hundred domains into it and then just let it run on all hundred of those domains, that's great. But if one of those fails or like somehow messes up your bash script, the whole thing will stop. And you don't know why, you don't know how, unless you're sitting there staring at it and you like make really good error handling with bash, but otherwise you don't really know what stopped it and it killed everything. So all 100 domains, like if the number five domain that it goes through somehow airs out, like it'll just kill the script and the other 95 never get done. So if you let it run overnight or you're cron jobbing it or whatever, it'll just keep breaking. So the single point of failure is normally an issue with that kind of stuff. But again, you can fix that if you want to. You can spread out your bash scripts and have a bunch of little mini ones and have them run separately or do really good air handling or whatever it may be. So this is an option. The second option is some stuff from my other videos. You can tell that this is maybe the option that I stick a little closer to you for my stuff, but this is the cloud engineering devops -y option. So this is actually trying to deploy automation more as true software rather than just scripts. So obviously some people's automation might not have a front end to it, but they're basically creating automation as like backend cloud services. 
that you can hit. Again, it normally is hosted in the cloud, AWS, DigitalOcean, Linode, whatever it is. It doesn't have to be. You can set up servers in your basement and do the same thing. But normally people are hosting them in the cloud. The DevOps aspect comes from people deploying their stuff as containers and you know Kubernetes clusters or using serverless architecture, starting batch jobs, you know, using Fargate and AWS or Cloud Run and Google Cloud and all this kind of stuff. You can use schedulers that are part of a lot of these cloud services to schedule all your jobs and all this stuff. You can have pub sub models to queue jobs and publish results and all this kind of stuff. And you split up your, your automation into little services. So there's like just a passive subdomain enumeration service that just does that and nothing else. And there's a brute forcing service that brute forces subdomains, but it's separate from the passive enumeration service. So that's kind of where, again, like your tools or your services exist and they kind of would like take jobs in somehow, whether they're from a queue or something else. And it makes all the services really independent, which then at the bottom of the screen, the, you know, couple things there is since they're independent, it's very easy to monitor them using some of the cloud tools for both runtime and oddities and failures. So you can see if you're using all your resources in the cloud and you can scale up and down really easily and really efficiently to spend the least amount of money to for the most amount of firepower in your automation. If a certain job, like one passive enumeration job keeps failing, there are a lot of tools in the cloud that will tell you that and tell you why it's failing, but all your other services would run normally because they're all separate backend microservices. So there's a lot of different ways to do this. There's not just one way to do DevOps. And I know I'm sure everyone can do it 80 bajillion different ways. The big like kind of caveat to this is the bottom two bullet points is the first one is it can take forever to develop and deploy. It can take forever, especially as like just one person, like it's a big, it's a big sinkhole to fall into. Right. And then along with that big sinkhole is it's a lot of time. It's a lot of effort and a lot of money for servers and resources. And that's before you see any results, right? Cause you're not running all this DevOps stuff normally from your, just like your computer and you can, but it's not as like DevOps even. You're, you're kind of just wasting your time. Same thing, whether you're running it on-prem on servers you have in your basement or you're running it in the cloud, like that costs money and stuff like that up front. And this route just costs a lot of time, a lot of money, a lot of effort before you really see any results. So there's the up and down to that. The third one is frameworks that already exist, open source frameworks. There have been, there's a bunch out there actually, and too many to count, so I'm not even gonna list them all. I just put my one recommendation, but people have already put out a bunch of automation frameworks that they use to just, you can give it a domain and it'll just, and it'll give you a bunch of stuff. You don't have to make it, you don't have to code it. Super beginner friendly, requires zero coding. You normally have to like just set up configuration files and go for it. I would highly recommend this if you're not sure really why you're doing automation, but you kind of just like to automate the stuff, you know, like, hey, I need subdomains and IPs and I'd like to fuzz and it'd be nice to just do a little nuclei run over everything so I don't have to think about it. And, but I don't want to code it. A lot of these frameworks can do that. For instance, my recommendation is Recon for the Win. It'll be linked in the description. It's super easy to configure. I'll also link Jason Haddix's blog on how to set it up to just be a quick and dirty, but actually really like full version of basic recon. I think he calls it like anti-recon recon. So, and that's literally because it takes like, it'll probably take you like 20 minutes to download it, set it up with your configuration keys, go get API keys, all that stuff. And then you just run it and you let it run overnight on whatever target you want or in afternoon, depends on how big the target is and you're done. And you don't have to code any automation. You don't have to build any automation and you don't have to deploy any automation. You don't have to worry about it. It's instant uptime, just like it says. The only little caveat to it is if you decide, oh, I, like I wish it did this or I wish it did this thing this way, or you know, you don't really get to like change stuff under the hood. Like you're just using someone else's stuff. So they code it how they want it to work. So if you think the subdomain enumeration isn't finding all the subdomains, like that, that's tough because you're using someone else's enumeration. You can try and update it yourself and you know pull it locally, clone it locally and try and change it. And ch you, you can and you can fork it or whatever, but it's not always as easy as something you built. The other problem is you may fall in love with a tool and really like the framework. And then the developer, whoever is like managing it or working on it as a passion project may just, you know, it may just fall off a cliff and they may just stop supporting it. So you have to deal with that too. It's a risk, 
But if you're looking for something like this and you're a beginner and you just want to taste automation without going the other two routes and actually building something yourself, Recon for the win is my recommendation. The newer you are to the plat to the game of bug bounty, that kind of stuff, I would just do this. Otherwise, the other two are kind of if you want to flex your development skills, scripting, whatever, and you want to try and make something, the other two are a likely option. That's all I really got, guys. Let me know what you guys use. If you guys use one of the three, let me know. Or any questions, hit me up on Twitter and the Discord, anything like that. Otherwise, peace.